To celebrate the new year, we're having the biggest sale ever on overstock clearance and brand new products. For example, save 60% on our Goose Down comforters, the best comforters ever. They go perfectly with our MyPillow bed sheets and duvet covers. Save 25% on our brand new kitchen towels. They're made with the same technology as our famous My Towels. Our initial quantities are extremely low, so get them now before they go. Our seasonal flannel sheets are finally in. You save up to 50% and they sell out fast every year, so order now. They're truly the best flannel sheets you'll ever sleep on. Or save up to 80% on all our clearance items. And this is where it gets even better. For a limited time, your entire order ships absolutely free. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use that promo code to get deep discounts on all MyPillow products. And for a limited time, your order ships absolutely free. Today's News Talk Radio. I do a lot of streaming radio. I do a lot of free streaming. TNTradio.live. Let's be really clear about this. The right of self-expression and free speech are of paramount importance to keep our country intact, and they are in jeopardy. Uh, The stability and security of our borders, also paramount importance to keep our country from falling into degradation, chaos, and austerity. Our finances are being squandered into countless anti-American initiatives while ignoring our open border. So we're joined by our friend Gene Valentino, host of the Grassroots Truthcast and founder of GeneValentino.com. Gene, our nation seems to continue on the path of things getting worse before they get better. I heard you speaking about this on one of your recent broadcasts. At this point, let me ask you, how important is it that we as a nation do what needs to be done to make sure no woke political candidates are elected or reelected and to secure that southern border? First, thanks, Steve and Brian, for having me on. I appreciate this. This has uh, always been a very transparent show, and I enjoy I enjoy being able to speak frankly and freely <laughs> with two other patriots with me. It's extremely important, Brian, to answer your question. Our border represents a psychological but also a physical boundary. The psychological boundary is that we as a nation have a way of life. We have a culture. We have a, a a sense of decency and our own set of rules that we that have come from our founding fathers that we have respected up to most recently. And in that way, it is absolutely important, Brian, that we protect our borders. In fact, you may know that on genevalentino.com, the website, we post not only the TNT radio shows, but we we also have Gene's second Bill of Rights. It's sort of a tongue-in-cheek uh, takeoff of America's first Bill of Rights, uh, the first 10 uh, amendments to the Constitution. In this Gene's second Bill of Rights, which you're welcome to go there to check out, one of them is a constitutional amendment that mandates the protection of our border. Uh, We have never denied people coming into this nation. We're a nation of immigrants, but we're a nation of rules, laws, order, and a culture, a manner of life that has become disrespected. And if there's anything to take up arms for and to get inflammatory about, it would be the protection of the border, Brian, to protect those very fundamental principles that our forefathers died for, for us, which we clearly are not appreciating the way we should. Yeah. Gene, first of all, thank you for those kind words. It's good to see you back on the show again. You know, you mentioned a couple of things there. You said we have a culture, you know, and this and and, and this is this is the problem with the left, Gene, as I see it. They don't like our culture. They hate it. It's white. It's patriarchal. It's racist. It's homophobic. It's xenophobic. It's every kind of phobe and ism that there is. And that would be bad enough. It was just a bunch of loony lefties that thought that way. But when you have an administration that's fomenting this hatred of country and hatred of fellow Americans and calling their number one political rival literally a dictator, that's what Biden came out today and called Trump a dictator. 
and saying the MAGA, the extreme MAGA wing, which is roughly half the nation, are basically just redneck, you know, homicidal maniacs, according to those folks on the left. So it's one thing when you the lefties of California saying, oh, well, we don't like America, whatever. But when the government, the federal government is fomenting this, the border is insanely important. But I mean, goodness gracious, this goes well beyond the border with these folks, don't you think? Oh, boy, you hit the nail on the head again. Yeah, just the first half of your question. If the foreigners don't like it here, they can leave. Uh, in fact, I'd encourage you to. We're not. We're we're helping people overseas and around this world that clearly don't respect us. Now, on the other hand, what are we doing funding overseas interests that don't respect us either? And that ties to your point, Steve. What are we doing funding Iran and Iraq? It was only yesterday, figuratively, that Barack Obama was dropping a billion dollars of cash off on the tarmac over there to fund these Shiite causes under Iran and Iraq's control that are causing us the problems we're having now. And so it leads to the next point, which we've talked, Brian, and you talked about with me in a previous episode. What's going on? What's going on that's causing the Biden administration to see so clearly that we are that we have been trampled upon? Why won't they set up a plan to move the immigrants out like Donald Trump said last night or the night before on television? His he will have an unprecedented major a removal plan in place of illegal immigrants in this nation. Sorry, folks, get ready to start packing on a re- on a return trip because you are here illegally. It's unfair to the hardworking people of this nation who are working their asses off to pay taxes they think they're un- unjust, and I'm beginning to think they're right, to fund humanitarian causes. What kind of humanitarian cause In New York City, as much as I'm anti-New York and what Mayor Adams has done to call that place a sanctuary city, what is humane about taking a school child and sending them home to work on some sort of Zoom connection with their teacher to turn the school into a hotel for these illegal immigrants? Are you kidding me? Now, they bragged about being a sanctuary city just because they're wrong and and supported a wrong cause doesn't mean we shouldn't be there as a fellow American to help them out. But I'll tell you right now, they're getting a spanking around this nation, those blue states and those blue sanctuary cities like never before. Why should we be funding not only people who came here illegally, but people who are sleeping, maybe your neighbors, and timing their response to the nation, sorry about that, timing their response to the nation with a counterattack against America that has not yet revealed itself to us. No, it's Mm -hmm. time, folks. There's no room for compromise on this anymore. Trump or no Trump, Biden or no Biden, we got to move before the next election. We got to turn this ship around because I hope we have a next election. If we don't, it's because these forces, these sleeper forces have surprised all of us, just like they did in Manhattan, taking over the school yesterday and sending poor uh, school kids home to learn off a Zoom connection, which is not the kind of uh, education we've grown accustomed to here in the States. I yeah, I think I yeah. said too much. No, you said just enough there, Gene. That's perfect. And you know what? We're going to be talking still about this, what happened in Manhattan, probably through the rest of the month. And all the while, while we're doing that, 250,000 more people will have come across that border. And then in February, another 250,000. So we're at half a million in the first two months of the year. While we're just trying to say, hey, what happened in Manhattan? What is going on right here? While we're asking that question, 
more and more people are coming, more and more high schools will be doing this, more and more churches will be shut down for this, more and more tax dollars will go to this, and more and more vulnerability at the national security level goes up, more and more fentanyl deaths. And with that, Gene, we have a headline inbound that we're going to take, and on the other side, I want to ask you about the recent news about this delegation going to Taiwan and your thoughts on that right here on State of the Nation at today's News Talk. News News. TNT Radio News. For TNT, this is James O'Neill. The United Nations Security Council recently passed a resolution strongly denouncing the Houthi attacks in the Red Sea which has significantly disrupted international trade. An oil tank in the Gulf of Oman lost communications early Thursday morning after being reportedly boarded by several armed individuals wearing military-style black uniforms and masks. During a meeting with residents from Chukotka, a region in Russia's Far East, President Vladimir Putin commended Russia for its resilience and independence in the face of external pressure. Why not give TNT Radio a follow? We're on all major social platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Gab, and Getter. Help us get the word out as we cover the biggest topics of our time right here on today's News Talk. TNT Radio. TNT Radio. Now, Gene, you know, we're talking about the the finances, the geopolitics, the national security, all this stuff. Our finance, so much money going to foreign wars. We could reference Ukraine. Steve and I were talking about that earlier in the program. An utter disaster. Over half a million people dead in that conflict already with $100 billion or more of Americans' money. And uh, that is losing popularity drastically. But while that's going on and while these other things in the Middle East are going on, today we're hearing the U.S. is planning to send a delegation to Taiwan after this weekend's presidential election and the, the unofficial group is supposedly going to be conformed, composed of former senior U.S. officials who met with uh, the winner, who will meet with the winner of the vote. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because according to the U.S. National Security Council spokesperson, you know, they're saying the move is consistent with the one China policy and the status quo. But of course, they're the after the elections, they're going there to assure them that uh, Washington is, you know, there for them. You know, it's it's almost like we're looking at potentially another conflict bl- breaking out here, and this has a lot of people worried, especially after Pelosi's last visit and the response from Beijing on that. Well, Pelosi, as an emissary for this nation, is I'd rather put I'd rather put gasoline on a fire. I mean, you're in a position where she does not represent the policy, or does she? <clears throat> is she really speaking on behalf of Joe Biden? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> or is she is she off on her own? Is Biden carrying the deep state message for her? Taiwan stands in a very precarious place because our economic plans with them and our growth plan with them could be fortified and could be secured if we open up the pipeline and let oil flow and we start producing oil freely china would realize they don't they couldn't handcuff us china has to realize they cannot handcuff us and we do that by having other economies that are not conditioned on them the problem with the united states for whatever reason is that this biden administration has chosen to succumb to the edicts of China, simply put. I bet I know why. (laughs) Okay, that leads into what's more salacious on the 6 o'clock news on TV every day. It leads into why Hunter Biden walked out on a hearing yesterday when when, uh, the congresswoman from Georgia was about to ask him some serious questions. (laughs) <laughs> it's they've been caught with their pants down and they are in trouble. And he, and and if Biden doesn't resign, he needs to step aside uh, in some way to allow leaders to to take hold. A new administration needs to come in and <clears throat> turn this turn the ship around so that we can save this nation. Taiwan is just one component, Brian, in an overall economic strategy is how you handle China. China, our relationship with Taiwan is one of several relationships we have in the economic uh, arena worldwide. The problem with China is that they think that we're 
in their backyard interfering with their neighbor. Well, I'll remind them about if, if I was the ambassador, about a spy balloon that just went over the top of us <laughs> a few months ago, and how they better just keep their mouth shut about inter American intervention in the world scene. We made China rich through our poor economic policies, starting with the Obama administration that have empowered them to now subordinate us. And therein lies the problem. And I trust Donald Trump can turn that ship around without a war, which he's already proven, and that we need to, I hate being political because this is, this is not about politics. This is about righteousness. And, and, and we talk about these different issues on the show <clears throat> in different contexts the righteousness of of this former president being indicted. What is it? I had a note here. Ninety one. What is it? Ninety one charges against the man right now. Ninety one charges against the man right now. And he's running a campaign and his poll numbers are going up and he's got more money in his campaign account than he did last week. Now, yeah. what do you say to that? I mean, I don't well, know. Well, I, what I was going to say, Gene, was, you know, it is remarkable how China is pushing this administration around. And I think that there's a lot of people that are kind of finally waking up and saying, OK, well, wait a minute. This guy is, is compromised here. I don't think there's any doubt to that. Has it been proven? No, not 100 percent. But it's I mean, you know, you don't need to, to borrow a line from Dylan. You don't need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows. People are seeing this. He is compromised. That said, China is also buying up our farmland. China is sending foreign national Chinese men of military age across our southern border by the hundreds. China is no doubt engaging in espionage. You mentioned the spy balloon. I'd wa I'd wager there are human assets on the ground that are going to be doing some espionage as well. And the Biden administration does nothing. But worse yet, the media ignores this. What do you think about all of that? Well, if the truth be known. $250 million just last three years alone to Iran from in the Biden administration. That's what I think about it. I think it's outrageous that we've spent that kind of money. You know, we lit the fire in the gas tank and then complained about the explosion. I, I, I don't get it. Yeah. If we have such bad behavior, I'm going to write a book someday entitled The Art of Bad Behavior. It, we're a good country. But we behave like expletive deleted. I mean, we just got to stop it. We've got to do what our founding fathers entrusted us to do and to hold up to those principles. I don't mind being a benevolent donor uh, to other causes around the world, but $250 billion to Iran in the last three years under the Biden administration who has no agenda but to kill Americans? Yeah. Yeah, it is rather staggering. Ash, yeah. you want to jump in? Well, you know, I'm just kind of letting that sink in here, Gene, as I always do when you join us. And we're just about out of time, so I want to shout your website out, genevalentino.com, of course, and the Grassroots Truthcast with Gene Valentino, which can be found on all good podcasting applications. Gene, as we, we're heading into the caucus next week, so take us out of here with your thoughts on how this may go. Trump wins by the same margin. The elimination of Chris Christie doesn't change the margins between DeSantis and, and Trump. It doesn't change the margins between Trump and Nikki Haley. I just think it's the rising tide will apply to all three ships with the votes from Nikki Haley being dispersed amongst the three. So no real transition in any one of the three outweighing what the current position is. I do commend the Republican Party that this deliberative process is that we have a candidate the people can grapple over uh, in, in plain view, which is what it's intended to be. Now compare that to the Democrats. Poor our Robert F. Kennedy doesn't even have a a shot at it, by the way, they nixed his own, nixed him out of the uh, Democrat Party. What a shame. He was right on target on a few issues, including Anthony Fauci. Absolutely. Well, yeah, they definitely. did it. To, they did it to Bernie Sanders, too, you'll recall. So mm, this is yeah, this is kind of straight from the Democrat playbook. We select yeah, and, thank and we select and we let you elect, I guess. 
And and thank you both for plugging my website, genevalentino.com. I've got a portal there that uh, features the TNT broadcasts like this one. So I uh, I feel like your partner and I like putting the these shows up on it so that we can uh, help distribute the TNT message worldwide. We well, appreciate we that. that very much, Gene. GeneValentino.com. Get on over there and check out his second Bill of Rights. We're riffing off of that today with regards to the United States border, but there's other great stuff up there about citizenship accountability, voting accountability, a lot of things that I'm interested in and we know you're interested in too, right here on State of the Nation at today's News Talk TNT. I remember the first meeting that I had with our chief medical team and I said to them, I said, life comes down, you're going to be judged by the choices that you make. And when the choice to start this company came up, it was a no brainer because we all need to fight for what we believe in and we need to strive for something. I'm Dr. Heather Gessling. I'm a family medicine physician. I am the chief operating officer for the medical team at the wellness company. We strive to base all of our decisions on science and the lack of unbiased science in the last two years is one of the catalysts that has brought about the wellness company. My role in the wellness company is going to be largely one of education and re-education of our physician corps who are going to be administering medicine to large numbers of people, we hope, under our guidance, okay? We are not going to be telling them how to practice, but we are going to be telling them how to approach the patient in a different way. And that way involves returning to the first principles of medicine, which are the basic sciences. Myself and the wellness company rely on data, scientific data to drive critical decisions. But importantly, we must consider all available sources of data. Everything's on the table. Nutrition is basically what we put in our bodies. And you can imagine what we put in our bodies really matters. And nutrition science is going to play a giant role in the data-driven decisions and treatment plans that we devise at the Wellness Company. So I'm Dr. Jen Vandewater. I'm a doctor of pharmacy. I graduated pharmacy college in 2006. I worked mostly for retail pharmacies. And through the years, I noticed that it became very robotic. The pharmacy industry was no longer about patient care. And it became more fill prescriptions, give shots, anything you could do just to keep busy. It wasn't, there was no time for patient interaction and patient well-being. But while I was there, I was still seeing that people were on lots and lots and lots of medications. So as I was watching doctors prescribe more and more, I thought, well, how can I assist and help the patient realize they may be on too many medications? Current medical practice is so completely off the rails that it almost has to be destroyed and rebuilt from the ground up because we have allowed ourselves to be taken over by pharma for the most part. Most doctors just prescribe, they treat numbers as opposed to patients, they don't reverse disease, they maintain chronic disease. This is all wrong. Our approach is wrong. Our approach to these diseases is wrong. It is all based on giving a pill to treat a number. That that is what modern medicine has become. We are not treating patients, we are treating numbers. It's always been said that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And if we can prevent an illness, we can prevent suffering, potentially hospitalization, progression of disease and death. So prevention is absolutely Critical. I see creating an integrated healthcare system that focuses on prevention versus being reactive. I see a company that's going to continue to have amazing products and put third party products on our store and in our platform that are vetted by some of the best physicians in the world. What makes the wellness company's approach unique is that we're coming at different angles. We're not just coming into one area of health, we're coming into education. We're coming into training even providers on what health actually looks like. We've been kind of confused and misguided through the years, so the wellness company is hitting it in a way that nobody else has hit it before. We have to go back to treating patients and getting them healthy again and maintaining that state of good health. I truly am inspired to leave the world a better place than I came in. I want to create that change. I want to help people. 
Grow in what you know about your health. Your health is yours. You own your body. We want to just guide you in that so that you can make the right decisions for your health. And I'm excited to tell you that we're here and we're bringing you the best.